know it's a little it's a bottom piece that goes to this yeah all right let me see see those two you guys all signed in down there yes You ever get in, Mr. Sampson? Yeah, you ready? Okay. I'd like to call the January 17th, 2023 business meeting to order. Oh, let me get my let me get my people over there. Madam Treasurer, may I have a roll call? President Dwayne. Present. Mr. Smith. Present. Mr. Sampson. Here. Ms. Wigani. Here. Dr. Pickett. Present. Ms. Reynard. Present. Mr. Lacey. Here. Seven present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I see we have a presentation for a Welcome Stadium update. Come on up, Curtis. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, Dr. Goodwine, good to see you and members of the board, Dr. Lolly. Uh, first off, I want to apologize for not being here in December when I planned to be here, but I caught the, some kind of flu bug, and I'm sure you didn't want me sharing it with you. So. I'm glad to be here tonight to give an update on Welcome Stadium. Um, I do have a presentation if we want to bring it up. And I guess I'll start out with just, you know, the master plan as you see it. This is the goal, uh, which is, you know, a new artificial turf field, new track. Can you go back? I'm sorry. I like showing pretty pictures. Um, as you can see, a whole facelift for the stadium, renovated concourses. Um, we have a new press box, new uh, sports lighting. On the bottom left is the new maintenance building. At the top left there is a new artificial turf for uh, discus and other uses. And then uh, we also have a, a brand new field house that's planned for the building. And we've been making good progress. So if, uh, if you went to some of the football games uh, this past fall, you saw that what we got accomplished in the summer, which is replacement of the turf field, uh, replacement of the artificial uh, or the uh, track. Uh, we have held off on the, the final surfacing of that track uh, for the spring. Uh, the reason is we want the track and field folks to have a brand new track and uh, just not let it sit there for a few months over the winter. So uh, that'll happen here in the spring. Um, new long jump, uh, new LED lighting um, has been replaced. You'll see it's actually multicolored lighting. It's pretty neat. Um, the new painting of the whole exterior of the, of the stadium. And then we did some infrastructure upgrades as well, like replacing some of the drainage around the field that had uh, deteriorated over time. Um, but we haven't slowed down since uh, when football started. We got out of the way of the football games, but we kept working. And so um, as you've, if you've been there, you'll see we started recoding uh, both of the grandstands. Uh, it used to you know, be rusted metal and holes in it. and. It was, in pretty, it was pretty beat up, and we're putting new epoxy coating on all that, and I'll show you some pictures. Um, we have installed new uh, ADA platforms at the bottom of both of the concourses, put in some ramps and new handrails throughout the stadium. That work is finishing up. And then we have a building pad for the new service building uh, that's in place. The materials for the service building are supposed to be delivered uh, at the end of this month, which is about the time that we expect the building permit. So that building will start going up probably early February. And then if, you, if you've noticed, there's no press box at the stadium. The press box has been demolished. Um, they are actually inside the concourses doing demolition work um, as we speak. Next slide, please. Uh, so I showed some, showing some pictures. So this is the, the new turf and the, the new track. You can see the, the grandstands where they've uh, done some demo, removed some seating uh, so that they can put the new epoxy coating on there. Uh, we got new goal posts. Um, you got the new LED lights that have been installed. Next, please. On the left is uh, what the ADA platforms look like. Um, 
with the ramps um, and railings. Some of that work, like I mentioned, is finishing up as we speak. And then on the right is what the coating, the epoxy coating will look like on the metal pans of the, of the grandstands. So those, seat, those handrails are in place, all the handrails are up, and they'll be installing, reinstalling the seating uh, as the epoxy coating goes down. A uh, picture of the home side. So this shows some of the, the painting that's been done on the exterior. This actually uh, shows the press box uh, while it was being demoed. If you go to the next slide, you can see what it looks like without a press box on the stadium. This is what it looks like today. Next, please. So um, upcoming work. So our, as we uh, move uh, into additional work that's happening in January, uh, we're going to have a new press box that'll start. So they'll start installing the foundations for that. And you'll see that press box starting to be built soon. Uh, the concourses will begin re being renovated here shortly. Uh, the service building will be built. Uh, it'll be completed in the next few months. The uh, stadium will be put back in place. There'll be some new fencing, some site improvements, new asphalt, paving, and, and things that you'll see inside the stadium. And there'll be a new sound system installed. That'll all happen. The goal is to have that done by August before football season. Uh, some other parts of the master plan that are uh, still in development. We have a, a new scoreboard that we're evaluating that needs to be selected um, at some point. Um, the new artificial turf field is uh, about 75% done in terms of design. So that'll complete here by the end of the month. Um, and then we'll just have to figure out what, at what point do we uh, place the order for that field to, have, to be installed. And then the new field house, uh, the scope of that field house is uh, still being discussed of what, what the programs are, what goes in that field house. So the design of the, the field house is um, in progress. So now we get to talk about money. Um, so the project budget um, initially was a little over $12.3 million. Um, there has been ESSER money that's uh, been authorized for the project for $9,250,000. So when you include the ESSER money, the total budget available, total funding as uh, today is almost $21.6 million. Um, the current work that we, that's been done to date, uh, if you include the new press box, you renovate the concourses, the sound system, the service building, and the site working utilities, all the infrastructure goes along with that. The total estimate for that cost is $28.4 million. So there's about $6.8 million in addition to the ESSER money that's going to be needed to be added to the budget to complete all that work. Next, please. Um, in addition to that, we've talked about the turf field. Uh, the estimate for that turf field is a little over $1.5 million. New scoreboard is approximately 1.8 million. And like I said, the field house, we don't know exactly what the design, what that's gonna look like. So that number's to be determined. But uh, if you include the turf field and the scoreboard, in addition to the work that's, that's I mentioned on the other slide, that total estimate is about 31.8 million, uh, rounded up. Um, that is about 10.2 million uh, shy of the current amount uh, when you infuse the ESSER money into the project. So uh, for tonight, uh, in terms of board action, board considerations, we've, uh, you know, we've, we ask that the ESSER money that's allotted for this project be included in the funding that would get us to $21.6 million. Uh, we're also asking uh, the superintendent or designee to be authorized to increase Shook Construction's purchase order. Right now that purchase order is a little over $11 million. So we need to increase that incrementally over time to add in the, the press box and the concourse renovations, the maintenance building, et cetera. Um, and that is all happening in packages. And so about every two weeks, we get a new package and we need to you know, increase their PO so they can proceed with that work to stay on, stay on schedule. Other considerations is uh, we talked about, you know, this project's gonna be funded or phased over time. Um, so if we mentioned earlier, you know, we need about $6.8 million to complete the work that we want done by this fall. Um, and then it's about a little over $3.3 million for a new scoreboard and the new artificial turf field um, that we're asking the board to consider adding that money over time to, to get that work completed. Um, and then once we finalize what the field house is going to be in that design, uh, we'll have a, an estimate of what that field house will cost, and we'll come back to the board and and uh, let you know so you can consider how we're going to fund that piece of the master plan. So with that, I'll take a pause and answer any questions you may have.
Are there any questions? Go ahead, Mr. Lacey. So the three million for the scoreboard is, a, is over and above the 31 million? The three million is for the scoreboard and the turf field. Together. And the turf, yeah, okay. If we go back, I don't think we can go Yeah, back. let's go back. Scoreboard is about 1.8 million. The turf is about 1.5. And those two are over and above? The, you, you showed a 31 million total. Okay. Yeah, if we can go back. One more, please. So to finish the, to not, not doing, considering the turf field or the scoreboard, it'd be 28.4. Okay, so the 31 does the include. Slide, yeah, to add both of those, it's about 3.3, 3.4 million, call it. Okay. That would get you 31.8. So all the 31 million does, that does not include is the new field house? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I do have a question. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, was this a project that was going to cost originally like $13 million? Are you asking me the question? Um, Dr. Lully, was this a um, project that was originally going to cost $13 million? Uh, it was approximately um, 30. Uh, was it 28 to start off with and then went to 30 at one point? What's, yeah, I think initially. In the initial. I think the initial. Initially, I think the, the amount you're thinking of was just to take care of the mechanical, electrical, some of the items that were in a, a report that was done years ago. Um, but the, once we are considering the renovations to the concourse, a new press box and other, we've been working off a number that's more like 28. And then when you add the field house, that gets you up to the 40-some million. Okay, thank you. Do I have any other questions? Thank you. I actually have a question for our business manager on this one. If you could just talk a little bit about, like, yes, we have a large investment coming in, but just some of the projections of what will be coming back to the district with this investment, just to show the other side a little bit of what we're hoping to gain. Thank you all. And Dr. Lolly, if you have anything to add on to what Dr. Lawrence has, please do. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at this as, as an enterprise fund, so using it for events like soccer, um, HBCU games, um, uh, band and band competitions. And so we're looking at this to uh, the Hall of Fame and some of the uh, activities we'll have there will be there. So we're looking at this to generate uh, anywhere from 150 to about $300,000 per year. Those are the low end and high end. And so we want this to be an enterprise fund over, over the course of the next few decades. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Wallace? No. Thanks. If I may, I have a question. Go ahead. What are we looking at for um, the timeline in terms of, and perhaps Gansa can answer this as well too, in terms of understanding the cost of the new field house and where we would be in regards to that project, understanding the cost, um, deliberating as a board, and deciding whether to add those additional costs to it, this project? Uh, this is a design build project, so we are making adjustments as we go. Mm -hmm. Those numbers that you saw there, they're negotiable. Mm -hmm. We have conversations about uh, what we're taking, at, what we're adding, and what we're subtracting. And we also uh, are preparing to be scheduled a budget meeting to have conversations around the question you just asked about timeline, what we're paying, and how much we're paying. Okay. Can you keep the board informed as to those um, conversations, please? Uh, I can do that in my weekly update. I can do it here. And then, of course, you and Dr. Pickin and I meet once a month, actually in a couple of days. And so yep. we'll talk more then. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions before we move forward? All right, I just re refreshed my screen and I see that the second presentation is gone. Is that correct, Ms. Kidd? Yes, it is. All right, so we'll be moving down to hearing of bar bargaining units. But I don't see. All right, Madam Treasurer, do we have any speakers registered to speak? No. All right, we just moving right along. Okay, pursuant to section 121.22G2 of the Ohio Revised Code, I move that this board go into executive session. This meeting is being held to consider appointment, employment, dismissal of a public employee. Do I have a second? Second. I did if you want to, Joe Lacey did if you want to use him. 
Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reynard? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Hey, Alex, can I have that computer back, please? This one needs to do an update. It's gonna take forever. Yeah, it's at five minutes. Let me just borrow yours. Y'all need to leave. Can we get the image of a fresh Thank you. Oh, now this is the, I appreciate you though, thank you. So I can get rolling. Oh, never mind. It's up. It's up. Never mind. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Let the record show the Board of Education of the Dayton City School District has just completed the, an executive session during which it considered the appointment, employment, dismissal of an employee, public employee. May I have a motion to exit, exit executive session? So moved. moved. Second. Moved and second. May we have a vote? Are there any questions? May we have a vote? President Goodwin. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Samson. Yes. Ms. Wigani. Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Dr. Mrs. Reynard? Yes. And Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Do we have your first recommendation? Yes, the first recommendation is to approve the uh, HR agenda uh, that's listed on the um, board docs. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. No. Are there, now are there any questions? Well, you wanted to vote separately. Yeah, question. Yeah, we have a question now. So, um, Madam President, number six, I would like to pull to vote on it separately, please. I would like to move to pull number six to vote on it separately. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions? May we have a vote to pull number six to vote on separately? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Okay, we are back into the original motion. Are there any questions on the HR agenda? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Let us 
separate motion on the second one there? Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a motion for the pulled agenda item. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodway? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? No. Ms. Wigany? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Casey? No. Superintendent, your next recommendation. Yep, next recommendation is uh, DEA after July 10th. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote. President Goodway? No. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Sampson? No. Ms. Wigany? No. Dr. Pickett? No. Ms. Reinhardt? No. Mr. Lacey? No. Seven no. Your next recommendation? Recommend the approval of the contracts as listed on the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Question. Go ahead, Mr. Sampson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the new addition highlighted in yellow, someone could just tell me what LWC Incorporated is I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, LWC Incorporated, the uh, um, architect firm that we already had um, with the open PO. They did the first two designs for the transportation center, and we had some money left over. So we've done a third design, which is a remodel versus a complete redo of the transportation center. We've got about um, seven million dollars encumbered to get that project started. So we needed a criteria engineer. You can't begin the scope of the project uh, per or, or Ohio Schools Facility Commission without having a criteria engineer first. So we had to have them do this work before we get dart started with the, um, uh, the RFP process. Madam President, second question if I may. Continue on. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence. When this process is done, what do you, what, when do we think the work will begin and how long will it be before this renovation of the transportation center will be complete? Uh, we want to start by May, June. I'm not sure how long because we're still in the process of working on the criteria, architect, engineering, design. We met today for a couple hours at transportation in the service building. So um, I won't know until we get the drawings back and do another run. But um, this project has been a long time coming. We keep saying we're going to do something in transportation and we're going to do it now. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence. Thank you, Madam President. Are there any other questions? <clears throat> I have one for you, Dr. Lawrence. I don't know why you run off so quick. <laughs> With this one, are you guys going to be intentional about increasing the amount of restrooms located in the building? Absolutely. There are two. We're already up to six now. Um, that is a, a facility that uh, most of the folks there are women. And so we have, um, uh, we've, yeah, we've intentionally thought about that. Also thought about, um, amenities that will make it comfortable for drivers who can't, who, who don't drive home during that three hour block. So we have some drivers who are in that, in that break room for three, three and a half hours waiting on their next, uh, their next run. So we, um, we wanna make this uh, a world-class facility for the people who begin the day by dropping our kids off. And you guys will be taking feedback from the individuals that are currently working in the current facility as you are designing the renovation for the next one? Oh, absolutely. All right, that's all I had. Mm -hmm. Before you leave, somebody else may ask something. Cut the weight. Are there any other questions? I tried. <laughs> Good. All right. May we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigany? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Your next recommendation. Recommend the approval of the Stiver School for the Arts resolution. This resol I'm sorry. This resolution is for them to do out of uh, country travel for um, enhancement of their educational experiences. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, we have a vote. President Goodwin. Yes. 
Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Your next recommendation? Recommend the approval of the resolution for a garage door settlement. Uh, it, the information is in executive content. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may I have a vote? President Goodwine? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Does that conclude your recommendations? It does. Thank you, Madam President. Appreciate it. Madam Treasurer, may I have your recommendations? I recommend the approval of monthly financial for the December 2022 as reviewed by two board members last Thursday. So moved. Second. It has been moved and has been second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may I have a vote. President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Your next recommendation? Well, it froze my computer. <laughs> okay. Uh, I recommend I don't recommend. It's not you yet. Oh, We're still on. We're going to call you. Time not your turn yeah got you I, I like that in you though you were ready <laughs> i recommend the approval of the official minutes for december 13 and uh, december 20. so moved is there a second second it has been moved and second are there any questions seeing none may I have a vote president goodwine yes mr smith Yes. Ms. Mr. Uh, Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reina? Yes. And Mr. Lacey? Yes. <clears throat> Seven yeses. Your next recommendation? Uh, I recommend approval of the donations as reviewed last Tuesday. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It has been moved and second. Are there any comments or questions? I want to thank everybody for who does continue to give to our district. What better time than a new year to just continue to spread that joy riding on over. Especially shout out to Alpha Delta Kappa. I love when I see Greek organizations put back in because Greeks are the leaders. Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? President Goodwin. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Your next recommendation? I recommend the approval of the following uh, purchase requisitions as reviewed last Tuesday. So moved. Second. It has been moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodwine? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. That concludes my recommendation for tonight. Thank you. Now, Dr. Lawrence, may we have your recommendations? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I recommend the approval of the local 627 MOU attendance incentive uh, for transportation. So moved. Second. Second. It is. Give the wait. Board member wait now, yeah. It has been moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodwin. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Sampson. Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. 
Mrs. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Dr. Lawrence, you have one more recommendation on here. It is on. It has to be approved yep. now. There you go, leaving so quick. <laughs> you got to wait for the magic words of does that conclude your recommendations? <laughs> That's how you know it's done. Right? Right. <laughs> Uh, I recommend the approval of the salary schedule listed in the board docs. So moved. Second. It has been moved and properly second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodway? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Dr. Lawrence, does that conclude your recommendation? That's a good one. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We are now in new business. Let's see. I recommend the approval of the certificate of enrollment. Is there a second? So moved. Second. <laughs> it's been moved a second. Are there any questions? I have one for you guys. Is this date, do you, what date in October is this from? Because there's no actual date listed. It's just October 2022. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodway? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sanson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. I recommend the approval of res the resolution to establish the service fund. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. So I want to discuss a little bit the next agenda item, which is the assignment of the board member committees. And I wanted to do something a little different this year, expand a couple committees, repurpose them, as well as have a discussion on one that I received a recommendation on. And in this one, I did reach out to all the board members to ask what their ideas were about them. I got a couple of responses back. I also included the superintendent, the treasurer, and the business manager to see what type of staffing should kind of accompany our committees. Because I want to ensure that like, we know that the staff here really does the true work here. We do create visions and we do ask questions, but really that work gets done by those individuals. And there's one before I do these assignments that I, I had a question because I did receive a recommendation of changing our, our disbanding our parent and family community engagement because it was a duplicate of service of the PTOs or the PTO meetings that our superintendent currently holds. And I wanted to discuss that because to disband a committee, we do have to vote on that. So I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a motion out to, will y'all make some sounds? Okay. Wow, you were just, you were just He's down there today. He's getting ready to talk. Yeah, so I make a motion to disband the parent and family community engagement committee. Is there a second? Second. Yeah, now are there, if we can discuss now, yeah, I want to discuss now because I know board member Reiner, this was one of the ones a uh, program that you brought on when you joined the board. Right. I, I don't know if um, I would recommend voting to disband it at this point. I think there's definitely a conversation about what the vision of the committee is. I was not on it last year. Um, when I came on a few years ago um, as coming from a perspective as a very heavily involved parent 
and seeing the need for avenues for communication and involvement. We have a position in the district now that does a great deal and the person in that position is doing a fantastic job. Um, but I still uh, would hate to see the loss of this avenue for communication and engagement, particularly thinking about, you know, we made a great effort a couple of years ago to have town halls and be very intentional about the way that we opened ourselves up to the community and asked for feedback and, and really dug into a couple different specific topics. COVID kind of put a halt in that. Um, maybe there's a conversation the board could have about ways that we engage with the public outside of board meetings. You know, board meetings are not typically way, uh, places in which we have deep conversations um, by policy. Um, you know, people are welcome to, to give us feedback during the public's portion of the meeting. Um, but it's not a place where we have the ability or, or, or we set aside time to have the deeper conversations. Um, I would worry that the avenue for having that would be lost if we lost the committee at this point. Um, certainly there's a great deal we can do and continue to do with talking to our community, reaching out to them, listening to them, um, showing parents how much we, we truly do value their voices and value what they bring to this district and um, what they, what they, the trust that they put in us by sending our kid, their kids to Dayton Public Schools. Thank you. Are there any other comments? So, so you're saying because they're, they're duplicated just by the PTOs themselves. I'm saying I got a recommendation that we should disband it because they were. And I'll let Dr. Lolly, because that's the, she gave me the recommendation as I asked everybody their thoughts on these things. Um, so she can talk a little bit about where that recommendation came from. When, when this uh, committee was formulated, uh, there really weren't a lot of PTO presidents and, and PTO uh, members um, that were available. Now what happens is we have our PTO meetings with our presidents and then our PTO presidents are expected to be on this committee. And if I'm not mistaken, there were very few uh, people that actually showed up that were PTO presidents. So it was a duplication this past school year since we do now have PTO presidents in most of our schools. Um, that's why I recommended um, the um, dismantling of it. However, I do um, think that there is a need for um, a town hall kind of situation that, that we used to have in order to gain that feedback. I just don't know that this committee is the avenue for that. Okay. Uh, Vice President Smith. Um, appreciate you, ma'am, Madam President. My thoughts on this would be, um, while the, the committee right now as it's structured uh, does a lot of duplicative efforts. I think that it's an avenue and it's one of the, I think it's probably the only, the only committee that we have that invites community members as its basis. So I think even if we just repurposed what it looks like, what's it, what the end goals of it could be, um, especially with a lot of things that we see in the community, uh, a lot of the issues that we are seeing with, um, just issues throughout the community in school and out of school. I think it could be a valuable space uh, for parents to come in, parents that aren't part of their PTOs, parents that you know uh, don't have some of the abilities to get involved in certain ways. I think it's a, a good place that we could do some, some different work. So I would be hesitant on totally disbanding the committee. The committee. Any other comments? Madam President. Go ahead. Um, I do believe that there has been a lot of work that has gone in with the establishment of the PFCC. Um, however, with the assignment of our academic coordinator, um, <clears throat> community outreach, student activities, and community engagement, I think that encompasses everything that was trying to be accomplished in this PFCC. I believe that we have a district component now that will allow us to implement town halls, to continue the conversation with parents. Um, and so for me, even though the work was done to help get us to where we are, I think we have gotten to the place where parents are comfortable now meeting with the superintendent, um, administrators and PTO presidents are engaged um, for the most part. So I think that the dismantling of PFCC is 
probably need it since we already have this active structure that now are engaging parents, um, like it was stated, it was only one or two PTOs at the time. Now you have more parents who are volunteering, engaged, communicating with the administrators, working in the schools, I believe. Um, and so I think that it would be of us to continue to put that work into the existing PTO structure that uh, the community, the parents, and administrators have been working so hard to um, maintain and grow. Board Member Wick Gagnac. <laughs> Who is currently leading up their uh, efforts it, with regard to the, this parent engagement piece? So I was a chair last year. Mm -hmm. So it was just a board effort, honestly. Yeah, it was a board. It, there, weren't, there weren't staff necessarily assigned to it, which I'm trying to change this year, because mm -hmm. it was a, a lot to, to try to do all of it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that part right there, and, I, and I, even the PTO, I don't think I had maybe one or two PTO, the, the meetings I had, my attendance was kind of low. Mm -hmm. It was less than 10 people when these were held via Zoom. But I, and I don't, after talking to Dr. Lolly about it, it seems like that group has been, they've been placed somewhere else. So I'm mm -hmm. not sure if, if this, this group just needs to be repurposed or something else or. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to um, disbanding it in a way when I hear that the work is being done in other avenues. I just want to make sure from a, a community perspective, anybody that may have been involved, you know, that finds this, you know, why what has had time to respond in a way before, you know, we maybe make the decision so all of the stakeholders feel, you know, heard. That's, that's, that's my piece of it. Okay. Uh, I see the effectiveness of how we're doing the work in other ways. I just, well, and I'm willing to, we're always willing to answer questions, but, you know, I'm always looking, like, trying to anticipate what problems we might have. Okay. Sergeant yeah. at arms. Can I make one more? <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Um, my next thought then circles around with the work that is being done with the academic coordinator, knowing that that is a, a small office of one, my concern would be burdening that office past its capacity and with uh, some of your proposed um, board member assignments or if we're doing it, how would you envision us assisting that um, outside of something that would not be us, which would be increasing the staff of that department? I don't think I understand your question. Can you rephrase it, please? So when you talk about when, so outside of disbanding this committee, mm -hmm. the way you looked at it with the staff involved in that how would the, our board uh, and in this committee be able to assist uh, the work that Mr. Sampson spoke of, knowing that, that the person who does that is stretched supremely thin as it is a one-person office? Mm -hmm. I don't think I have an actual answer for that at this moment. I think I would kind of want to lean a little bit on you, Board Member Reiner, like if we take this another year or with it to really see what the purpose of the committee could be moving forward knowing, again, what Vice President Smith has stated about how the individual who does do this type of work is a department of one, with board member Wick Gagne has stated that you will want to hear from the community if, again, if they want to continue to engage in the way that they aren't engaging in some of the other work we do. I don't really remember what you said, Board Member Sampson, so I'm going to just skip over you and come back. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, just seeing that idea, do you have any thoughts on like, how to envision what this committee, how it can work in the framework, knowing that when it came into existence, we didn't have some of the things that it, it helped build up, but seeing that those programs are now here and how we can flourish going forward? I don't think that's something I can answer right now. I yeah, no, that. just if you think it's something that you could work on more so. Sure. Then, yeah. All right, are there any other comments? I do have uh, a, an item um, I would like to discuss to the committees. Um, if I may, Madam President. Oh, sorry. 
point of order, you have a motion on the floor. Yeah, that we're just talking oh, about. Oh, apologies. My apologies. Yep, yep. The motion is to debate Yeah, the motion is to disband Mr. Mano. Thank you, Parliamentarian. Appreciate it. Oh, no, he's a Parliamentarian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, former parliamentarian. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, may we have a vote. President Goodwin? No. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Sampson? Uh, no. Ms. Wigani? No. Dr. Pickett? No. Ms. Reiner? No. Mr. Lacey? No. Okay. Seven no's. Thank you. One second. <clears throat> All right, next, uh, there is a resolution to define the purpose and composition of Dayton Board of Education Policy Committee. This resolution is to expand the members on the policy committee. I move that we adopt this resolution. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Now there are any questions or comments? Question, Madam President. Uh huh. Is this policy committee, um, this resolution, is this the first and second reading, or is this going to be the first reading to give us time to look at it, ask questions, um, or do you want all of the questions tonight? Which one do you want to do? I'll let you pick. Um, we can do first and second if that was the intent. The only question that I have is um, the exclusion of the line through and the addition, what is the rationale to the superintendent, associate superintendent, what was the decision? I understand to grow it. I just want to go on record of why we want to enhance. What is the thought of enhancing the policy committee? The thought is to have more touch points in the district. <clears throat> right now, the policy committee itself is a very small sector. And I, I personally, I was on the committee. I don't believe it represents really the different voices that you have in your committee, I mean, throughout your district. So even adding on, well, some positions will already be there. You know, we have three direct reports, which are the treasurer, superintendent, and the business manager. As we do have associates, <coughs> superintendents, who I believe already come to the meeting. I believe, were the, the chief ever come to the meeting? Mm -hmm. So the chief of schools, because that was the- No, I'm sorry, chief academic officer and chief of HR uh, were serving on it um, because policies relate to them. So those individuals were there. So the chief of schools weren't actually included, but the policies, most of them go directly to, those are direct touch points. So you kind of want that, that feedback on there. When it comes to the chief of, chief of HR, we, had, we did have a representative from HR, always present, because you know, they, they do those type, with the DEA representative, there's always been a seat for, I believe, the president I'm not sure how many times like the president is one person in the whole thing. So opening it up to it's really who they can send. That is the reason of adding those two seats on there as well. And the Office of Exceptional Children Representation, I mean, we've heard consistently how much of a touch point that that office has in our district. So just kind of have them at the table as we are not only taking recommendations that we get from the Ohio School Board Association, but when we do more of a dive into things that may not be on their radar, you're just adding that diversity of thought of how we are continuing to move our district forward with our policies. Madam President, if I may. Continue on. Um, if I could um, request, not make a, oh. a friendly amendment to the resolution, because I heard Dr. Lolly mention the chief of academics. Mm -hmm. And that person is not listed in this resolution. Um, so if I could request adding the chief academic officer, individual who does the curriculum, I think it is important that that curriculum person is there as well. Before you do that one, can I ask, Dr. Lobby, is there anyone else that's missing on there that was in the past one? Because it wasn't meant to take anybody away. Uh, I believe everyone else is covered. All right. 
I accept your friendly amendment. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions or comments? And a point of clarification, since it's a resolution and not a policy, it doesn't require a first and second reading. You said it does or doesn't? Does not. Okay. See, no other questions, now we have a vote. President Woodwine? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigany? Yes. Dr. Pickett? No. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses, one no. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the board committees. So again, the intent here was to actually give a, give more of a, a round look of what we had last year to our committees. I tried to honor some of the requests that I did receive for individuals as well as place people who I think would make good teams together on different things. Uh, in addition to here, there is another document, I'm not sure if it's on here or not, that I just wanted to try this year for us to actually split up the schools that we have amongst us. It doesn't take away from your ability to go to any school if you're choosing at any time, just trying to split the amount of schools that we have in our district amongst us to actually have a touch point and be able to really start develop some rapport and giving those schools just a board member that they can reach out to that if in the next year that we are spending that type of time with. The committees are on there as listed. I don't believe this requires a vote because these are appointments. If I could, though, I would like to, I would request a few um, changes. These are appointments, but if you can shoot them to me in the email, I will consider them. I, I mean, I would like to discuss it openly in a meeting if that's okay. Okay, when we get down to your section, you sure can. Uh, can we not do it right now? I think this is a good opportunity. This isn't a discussion section, so I'm gonna follow the agenda, but when you get to, when we get to your section, you can bring it back up if you feel necessary. So let me, for point of clarification, does this, um, does that mean that this document has the ability to change? I can change it, yes. It is one of the duties that the, the board president does have the ability to point individuals to it. So yes, I can change it. It has not been changed in the past after the first meeting. I don't believe there is a president that said that after the first meeting that you do change stuff. But let me ask my parliamentarian, uh, Mr. Lacey. I mean, after appointments have been assigned, are individuals on there for the year or do, do are these that's, that's being added. Um, so it is, a, it's, yeah, that is the one thing that the president does. We've had, oh, my phone is like, I mean, Go ahead. There have been people who asked off of committees and okay. asked to switch as well. So there has been changes made during, this, during the year as well. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, uh, apologies. I, I would say if you want to switch with someone to find someone to swap with you, that's fine. Well, I, I'm, I would just like to say right now, since this is, this is an agenda item, I would like to discuss it right now. Um, there are, you know, thinking about the conversation that we just had a few minutes ago, um, and I, I relayed this to you in my email. There are a few committees that um, I, I feel that I pr should probably be on and perhaps be the chair of, just in terms of the work that I do outside of this board, particularly um, for the OSBA. I am on the OSBA Board of Trustees. I'm a cabinet member for the Board of Trustees. Um, I am on the Southwest Region Executive Team, um, as well as being a delegate for the NSBA Federal Relations Network. Um, through the OSBA, um, as well as the, the COSBA advocacy delegate as well, too. I, I would like to request, um, and I, I think this is an appropriate time to discuss, I would like to be on those committees and chair those committees due to the fact that I do a lot of work with the OSBA and the NSBA and COSBA already. Um, and you know, you mentioned a little while ago that last year you had a lot to do, you had a lot on your plate, and you certainly have a lot more this year. Um, I believe you have nine committees and I have four, and so I, I would like to respectfully request that that be changed. Thank you for your request. I'm not changing the committees, though. Is there any, anyone else have something they want to state on there? Yes, I do have a comment. 
Go ahead. Since I'm not, I cannot request it, I'd like to comment that the Cultural Engagement and Inclusion Committee does not have any diversity on it. I would like to be on it to represent, be more inclusive of our students. Thank you for your comment. Next agenda, are there anyone else who wants to make a comment? The next agenda item is the discussion of the board member manual. This has not been updated since 2020. And again, this was another item that was sent to all of you guys. If you didn't have a copy of it, I also sent it to our direct reports, our direct reports to actually task them with updating this to adhere to our, not only the state law, but also actually updating some information that is just inaccurate in there as well as flushing out some things that need to be corrected grammatically. If you have any comments or questions on those, I would direct you to send that information to Dr. Lolly because she is spearheading working on updating this board manual. Are there any, any comments on the board manual? Thank you. All right. And the next agenda item is a discussion regarding the superintendent RFP. So with this one, I'm going to, I mean, I'm not making a motion or recommendation, but I am going to say that this is something that we should send over to our legal team to really flush out what that will look like and what that process would be. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, moving on to comments. Mr. Lacey, do you have anything? Um, yeah, last Thursday I had, I, uh, I had a discussion uh, with, uh, with another board member and the treasurer um, about the financial statements and found them to be in good order. Thank you. That's all I have. You're so thorough. I love it. <laughs> board member Pickett. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I wasn't here last month, um, last week, I'm sorry. Um, but there was a question that um, Board Member Reiner asked, and that was, does this board take accusations of sexual harassment seriously? <laughs> I'd like to uh, respond to you since I wasn't here, because I take accusations of sexual harassment seriously. And I would definitely welcome an investigation in regard to the accusations brought to this board. I want to apologize to you because the way those accusations were handled. There are many young girls that are tuned to this meeting right now who are learning firsthand that if they came forward and speak up, they will be retaliated against. I asked Mr. Smith not to, vote for vice, for, to run for vice president because I would not sit quiet while a person of authority harasses a board member and gets to get away with it. I will continue to press for an investigation, and I am sure that the staff, teachers, members of the community, and students would like this to happen. The work of this board has been tainted, not because we have differing opinions in this board, but because the allegations of sexual harassment that have been ignored for too long. This has been a giant elephant in the room. And I wish that we address this in order for us to move forward as a board. In addition to that, um, I have received many phone calls from parents at 7 o'clock at night, 6.45, wondering where their kids are. And I would like to say that no one in this board should be able to be home and enjoy their meal if kids are going to school when it's night and go home when it's dark. It is not acceptable. We have now much more routes than we did before that are not covered, and I would like for us to get um, an answer on that as soon as possible. That's all I have, Madam President. Did you have a, what was your question on the route things? Are you directing that to someone to answer for you, or is it just open-ended? I would like an answer. I mean, I'm, I'm asking, who are you asking for? Um, well, whoever is in charge of transportation and can explain why kids are still in the buses at 7 p.m. at night, why are there 10, 15 routes not covered on a daily basis? Okay. Board Member Reiner. 
Thank you. I wanted to um, speak to the public about um, something that's important in the work that I do um, with the OSBA and communicating with them. Um, I really wanted to talk about some of the things that the OSBA has been talking about in terms of the new biennium budget in the State House. Um, we've been talking about that at length. The reason why that's important is because um, this new General Assembly is tasked with um, coming up with the biennium budget, and part of that um, is including fully funding the Fair School Funding Plan. Um, if any of you have followed the work that I've done and advocated for in the past couple years, um, and a, a lot of other people, not just me, um, have been very intentional and, um, uh, and quite focused on making sure that our schools are fully funded at the state level. Um, our system of funding our schools has been unconstitutional for, our, for quite some time. There was a bill that um, if the fair school funding plan is fully funded and implemented correctly will constitute a constitutionally um, uh, a constitutional fair school funding plan but it is incumbent upon the general assembly at this next biennium budget process to fully fund it um, at this point um, there's a lot of stuff there, there are so many details that i could talk to about if the public is listening it is very 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 important that you contact your legislator um, and talk to them about the importance of fully funding the fair school funding plan so that we can have a constitutional school funding system. Um, it is fair, it is equitable, it is um, doing right by all of our districts all across Ohio. Um, I would urge you on behalf of the OSBA and on behalf of DPS and on behalf of every single district in this state that knows the importance of supporting our education and supporting our students to contact your legislators and let them know that you support fully funding the Fair School Funding Plan. Um, please reach out to me if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to talk your ear off for two hours about the work that I do supporting this. Um, but we really want people to understand what that process looks like and the importance of reaching out to your legislators and advocating for that. Thank you. Board Member Sampson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, I would like to um, say congratulations to you for wearing a Dunbar oh gosh, Wolverine um, shirt. I appreciate you so much for representing uh, the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. Thank you so, so much. Um, second thing is I would like to send a special shout out from the board to Mr. Antoine Spann, student of the month for last month at Valerie. Um, got a chance to see that on Facebook. Young man, you are a rock star to us and to Mr. Deshaun Robinson who did the, the interview. I enjoyed that segment and appreciate everyone who was instrumental in putting that out. Also, I wanna say um, thanks to Ms. Angela Worley, our academic coordinator of community outreach, student activities and family engagement and uh, the McKinney Vento team for, uh, and all of the volunteers who volunteered yesterday for the drive uh, to get school clothes, clothing, other items that uh, our homeless youth benefit from. So I wanna say I appreciate everyone for that effort on yesterday. And then lastly, Madam President, as it relates to the, the edict that we're given for the student superintendent's RFP, I would like to uh, also see if our legal team could do an RFP um, for a performance audit. Um, in our finance meeting, I recognize we serve 11,000 some odd students. And I wanna make sure that we are, um, we are staffed properly. Are we top heavy? Are we, where are the gaps? I would like to request that we find an agency or organization that can do an audit that can tell us the structure for 11,000 individuals 11,000 students that we serve. Are we staffed appropriately? Are we overstaffed in some areas? So I would like to um, request that an RFP be issued or created so we can discuss something as it relates to a performance gap audit, things of that nature. Thank you, Madam President, that's all I have. I'd like to request that you put all that in the email because that was a lot you said right there at the end, sir. Thank you. Board Member Whit Gagne. 
Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, thank you everybody for coming out this evening. Thank you for the beautiful welcome presentation. I continue to be thoroughly engaged and enchanted with the project over there and super excited and willing to collaborate and um, you know just do whatever we can to um, bring this project to successful completion. And that also means, uh, you know, um, you know, balancing needs all of the time. So I'm super excited about the work. Um, I, in my work with the athletics department, um, I enjoy basketball games Wednesday, Monday, Saturday, Friday, not too many on Saturday, but I continue to see our students and our leadership and buildings display uh, fine qualities of leadership and behavior and uh, just a beautiful sense of community and we are building even more. Um, Dr. Goodwine and I have been on a mission to improve our concessions and we're really trying to, uh, you know, just to improve the experience everywhere we go. Um, in that vein, I just kind of want to rally on, you know, Dayton Public Schools and our kids get a lot of bad rap in the community about being bad students. We often hear all of the bad news stories, but I would uh, encourage all of us to go out into our buildings and community and see all of these beautiful young humans out there who are, you know, working against some pretty incredible odds to, uh, you know, show up at school every day and be there. Um, some of my board work recently has included um, um, E.J. Brown Lunch Lady. I'm in my third or fourth visit to the school and really working on establishing some relationships there. Um, just a lovely community of kids and teachers. Uh, but when even you drive up North Main Street, I think you can all agree that those are some pretty difficult parts of our community that see difficult times. There's a lot of violence in the community. And so those students that live in those environments and that are surrounded by those environments are certainly affected by that. So it's really been rewarding for me to be there and I'm gonna to continue to be there and I would encourage everybody to come out and be there. I have a couple more schools that I'm in charge of. Um, I want to give a shout out to our board president this evening who has so thoughtfully and uh, uh, you know taken a lot of time and consideration to work with this board this year and try and give us tasks and duties that align with, um, with who we are and who we want to be. And I certainly offer that that being a changing living document that um, we all continue to navigate and move into with uh, intention of serving our kids the best. So um, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you, thank you to superintendent, thank you to treasurer, thank you to our business manager who continue to work together to make us all better, all of our chiefs. So yeah, it's gonna be a great 2023. So uh, keep coming out, keep listening, keep talking. Uh, yeah, keep showing up, keep creating, keep making relationships wherever you go. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Smith. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, I will say that I have nothing to say about some of the things that have come up this evening after I had what I had to say last week. Anything else after that would be handled in its proper course and in its proper time. Secondly, and really importantly, I would like to send out condolences to the families of some of the people that we lost over the break and in the last month or so. We lost some of our most precious uh, things in this district, which are our children. And when we, those things happen, you think of not only that, but having a loss in that family unit as well. Um, you think about the students that they go to school with. You think about the staff members that come across them from their bus drivers to their teachers to their, uh, uh, the, the people in the cafeteria to their, the custodial staff that sees them. So understanding that that is a huge loss of our community that you, know, you don't really ever get used to and you never want to get used to and it happens far too often and um, just want to send the condolences out to our our DPS family on the losses that we've we've seen um, especially recently another thing I want to address is we have had meetings with our staff on multiple safety and security issues I want to give a shout out to Chief Wright and his team on some of the improvements that we've seen as far as the handling of the games I noticed that 
at some of the games. They have the ID scanners for students, uh, which has really worked to, to keep things down. There have not been the incidents that we had seen before, so I appreciate all of the minds that went into that. I really appreciate those thoughtfulness, uh, that thoughtfulness that came about when we talk about, like Ms. Wick Gagne said, about improving the experience um, from safety and security to the concessions to the flow of people in there. So I appreciate everybody that's been involved in that from Dr. Lolly and Treasurer Abraha and our business manager, Dr. Lawrence, um, Executive Director Jones and her staff. It's been all hands on deck and really coming up with uh, ways to keep things flowing and keep people safe. Because those events, when we talk about sports, um, it's really a community gathering space. You know, one of the things that we, we see is that with our community in decline in other areas, these, these youth events become more than just an athletic event. It's a place people come and hang out at. It's a place, you know, families come. And you go to these spaces and you see children in strollers all the way up to grandparents on walkers and people in wheelchairs. So we want to make sure that these places are safe spaces. So I appreciate all the work that's been going on there. Um, with that, I do want to note that there will be upcoming auditions for those who would like to sing the national anthem at events, as well as those who would like to be announcers at events. So those are coming up soon. You can check online, and they'll have the dates on there. I think the one for announcers is this week. Um, the one for singing is coming up soon. So I appreciate you if you go check that out. We definitely want to showcase the talent that we have in this district, all over this district. Um, another thing that I wanted to raise, I missed it before, but I wanted to um, really give a kudos to some staff members over at Dunbar High School. Um, a while back, uh, before the break, they had an event where they invited barbers and um, professionals. Uh, they almost had a whole barbershop and salon kind of setup going on. Um, and that day, I want to say they had people there from when they went into school all the way until they went out. And just to see some of the students' faces, uh, seeing some of them come in and say, hey, you know, I didn't have 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 dollars to get this done. And to see that, you know, in, a, in their lunchtime, they were able to come down and get a haircut or come down and get their hair braided or something like that. Seeing that be able to be done and seeing what it does to a student really shows um, what we don't see. And we, we look at those things and we take those things for granted. We take getting a hairstyle for granted. And to see, you know, I, saw, I remember a kid came down, it was his birthday, and he got his hair cut and he had a little, he came out and students really came up to him and said, oh man, he got you together. He got, and like this kid was in near tears because the, the conversation with his peers was all about him for a moment and all about him in a good way in a good manner, and I want to say it was ran smoothly. I appreciate everybody that was involved. I mean, kids were coming in, they went back to class, they had their notes, their passes. I mean, they really had them come in, and I would um, just want to appreciate those that um, partook in that. I really think that those kind of things, when we talk about the socio-emotional aspect of our children, that we don't always see those kind of things. Um, lastly, we've had meetings as well. Dr. Lolly has been involved talking about some of the other issues that we've seen and community issues on um, just a lot of the issues we're seeing with youth. And it expands past the youth, which we've said before. I mean, I don't know if anybody saw the video from downtown just the other night where there were people doing donuts in the middle of downtown in, in the early morning hours. And so looking at how it's not just a K through 12 or high school or middle school thing, we have a lot of just things going on that could turn deadly. Those situations could turn deadly in a blink of an eye. Um, you look at those things, so we've had had conversations with the mayor, our city manager, people from the county, um, RTA, various other groups. Dr. Lolly, am I missing anybody? Uh, business members were. Business members mm -hmm. as well. To really start discussing how do we address these kind of things? What are some of the resources needed. And I went to a meeting with the chief of police and our mayor and some other um, individuals in the community that are focused on mentorship and um, extracurricular activities on seeing how can we get our children into positive relationships, uh, positive environments and things like that because there is a lot going on um, that is very detrimental to the health of our children and our community. So 
want to update on that, that we've been having those meetings, and I appreciate people coming to the table for those, because those are the things that we see, um, but we don't really understand how that plays a part on what's going on. You know, I'm thankful that no one was seriously injured, but the, uh, and I know when we look at those things, people think, you know, spinning donuts, it's fast and the furious and those kind of things, but those kind of things can, can turn dangerous. So I appreciate everybody's efforts on trying to improve the safety for our children and in our district. Um, and I think that is all. And as always, try to catch our calendar. Please go to a game. Please go to an event. Please check out a science fair speech contest as we go through the year. These children love seeing their community there. They really do. And it really adds um, so much more to them when they see people coming out to support them. So thank you. Appreciate you, Madam President. Thank you. Dr. Lawrence. Any closing comments? Yeah, I'd just like to say to the viewing public and to you, I average about three to four schools per day. Uh, so I get a chance to see a lot in the district. And so today was a good day at Thurgood and Meadowdale. Shout out to their teachers at both spots. Glad to be back. First day of the semester for high schoolers. And there was a lot of excitement in both buildings. I'd also like to say that um, typically I don't think people look at our organizational chart. And so I supervise purchasing and procurement, nutrition services. Um, Dr. Lally and I are the primary liaisons for the Welcome Stadium Project, which is a massive undertaking. I also supervise all of operations, which includes um, um, logistics engineers, um, plumbing, uh, roofing, uh, carpentry, uh, anything that we do in this, in this operation that deals with facilities, I deal with it. In addition to that, I supervise transportation. We've not had a, an executive director of transportation. And I want to say that each week I write, write a weekly report to the board. Uh, it starts off with transportation, and I've detailed all these challenges extensively uh, in the 15 weeks that I've been here. We're not running from it, not hiding at all. And in fact, I ask once, once we get the transportation team together, the leadership, We'd love to come and give a presentation and talk about our challenges. So thank you. Thank you. Madam Treasurer. Yeah, uh, I would like to thank my payroll uh, department. They completed W2s uh, way before the deadline of uh, January 31st, and they are completed and mailed. So everybody will get their W2s maybe today or they got it already. Um, the second one I have is uh, we completed uh, the raise for admin and DSSs, and they will, all the admin and DSSs are going to see on their paycheck for uh, Friday. That's all I have. Thank you. Dr. Wally? Yes, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Mike Unger, a teacher at Stivers, a longtime teacher at Stivers. Uh, he has published his first book. And we'll be um, sharing that with the Stiver staff in a February staff meeting. So I just wanted to publicly congratulate him on being an author, a published author. And the book is very good. Um, I've read it, and uh, it um, is very thoughtful, and people will enjoy reading it. So take a look and see if you can find Mike Unger's uh, book uh, so that you can read that and, and um, support the work that he's been doing at Stiver's for all these years. Um, I, too, would like to uh, thank uh, Angela Worley um, and those people that worked on the MLK Day of Giving yesterday. Uh, it's always a big project, uh, but it's always very well done and very well received. Uh, so I'd, I'd just like to express my thanks as well as uh, Mr. Sampson did. And then, again, to reiterate what uh, Mr. Smith spoke about, um, the um, games are going on the athletic events are going on we have science fair coming up we have our speech competitions coming up and our students love the support um, they they enjoy uh, playing to a crowd and they enjoy the opportunity to um, actually show their skill and their development both both academically and athletically so please feel free to come to the games and enjoy the time uh, with our students it's always a it's always a great adventure and that concludes my report for tonight Madam President. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say a couple words here. It's been an exciting first week in the chair. I mean, the phone continues to ring way more than it did when I was all the way down there. So that's been fun. 
couple things I want to highlight first. On February 2nd, our athletics department is hosting a Who's in the Journey, which is a panel discussion honoring girls and women in sports in their journey beyond the jersey. I would say definitely check out the website, check out their social media. There's a host of individuals that they're bringing in to have this discussion. Always really good to support females in athletics as the support is just still needed because we are not where we need to be when we, we talk about that investment that goes into women in their journey through not only athletics, but life in general. Second, on February 3rd, we are having a gun prevention campaign, which is a partnership panel discussion between our DPS family engagement and the Fudge Foundation. I mean, gun violence is very real. We continue to see daily information of how relevant the topic is. I would implore anyone that is hearing this message, please attend this, bring your child with you. Like this, these are topics that we have to discuss so we can actually try to find solutions that keep us in a safe environment. In addition to that, I wanna say, as board member Sampson pointed out, I do have on a Dunbar shirt today representing you know, a school that was founded in 1931 and was founded with the intention of allowing black children to actually attend school in the district. And I'm wearing this shirt because over the past weekend, our athletic team actually participated in the Flying to the Hoops exhibition and they were actually victorious in it. And you know, I, I stand up and show the people, like we, we give it to Dunbar from one day, you know, good for them, excited for them. So I, I, I'm, I'm continuing to be impressed with that team over there, not only athletically, but even internally in the schools, as I am a person who does frequently go to the schools and they've had a couple members that have been out, but that team, you wouldn't tell that they missed a beat of how strong that they've been able to just really stay bonded and continue giving, doing the work and the service, no matter what challenges we are, we are given to them. I want to also shout out that as last year, we talked about Thurgood actually getting a new program in starting in the third semester or third quarter, Thurgood is actually launching a robotics class. And that is a major deal because we have been pushing and pushing and pushing and Dr. Lolly and her team has been able to make that a reality for that school that we are just going deeper into giving those students curriculum that matters, curriculum that excites them and curriculum that is relevant to today's challenges and the things that they're doing. So I'm excited to see how that goes. I hope that they get to make some killer robots and I hope I get to see some battle bots and they just like tear them apart. That'd be great. I'd be really excited to see that. As mentioned already, we do have science fairs coming up. This is kind of one of my favorite times of the year as a former science fair champion out here. I am excited to see not only the experiments, but the displays because presentation is far more important than if the thing actually works. So I'm excited to see and I'm able to judge some of those things. We do have debate teams coming back. I can't wait till we get to see some of those, some of our scholars take really the very witty, witty mouths that they have and, and just steer them in a way that is academic fun in a way that just challenges them in different ways. So I'm excited for that. The MLK celebration yesterday, I saw a number of DPS staff out, not only during the parade, but individuals also assisting over with the family and engagement team over at Ponets. The AKAs were out there in larger numbers than usual, but you know, they were out there to celebrate not only MLK Day, but also the founding day of my sorority, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. So I appreciate them for doing service on such a day. Um, I do have two more comments for you. Our hoodies are in and we as a board need to give directive to Dr. Lolly to give those hoodies and task the principals with giving those out. So I don't, if you look like you were swift, I seen it, go ahead. So, uh, do you need a motion or do you just need, what, do you, what you need? I just need you to do the majority candidate, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna make a motion then. I'm gonna put a motion. I move that we direct Dr. Lolly to instruct her team on how to pass those, or determine how to determine, pass out the hoodies. Second. second. Move to second, are there any questions? Seeing none, maybe have a vote. President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. 
Dr. Pickett? Abstain. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses, one abstain. All right, we're going to have a lot of people very excited to see those as I continue to hear about those out there. And I want to end just on some thoughts of some things that I know I'm going to face in this year as, as the, again, we haven't had a female president of this board since 2011. And as any female that is in a leadership position or that's in a workplace, there are challenges that are unique to us in these places where not only do you face sexism sometime from your male counterparts, but you also face it from females. Not only are you challenged in ways that, that you normally don't experience, like males are going to challenge me more. Females are going to challenge me more. And I'm going to get up here each and every week and speak on the things that are my beliefs and my convictions, because that is why I'm a part of the Board of Education. My job here is to be an example to how we should move forward and how we move through even when we have conflict. I want to say also to our staff that you all have to remember the seven individuals or seven people out of the nine people on this day is do not work in this district. Our conflicts are because we are also politicians as well. It is still our hope and our intent that every person that shows up in this district every day shows up to give their best to this district to figure out ways to work through conflict. You're going to see us right now work through conflict because we have it. It's apparent, it is real, and it is a part of adult and human relationships. But it is, our, it is my goal and my intent that individuals who are not only adults, we lead by example. And you lead by example by showing up every day to do the work. You can only work with individuals who are willing to work with you, and then you have to learn how to work through and move forward individuals who are not willing to work with you. To our students, just a reminder that you guys are growing up and you are seeing us fight for things that we believe in because when we were your age, we had and we hope that people would fight for us in the ways that we're fighting for you today. And again, please do not be confused that any disagreements that happen on this day is are disagreements here on this day is. These are professional relationships. These relationships are meant to push and push us forward harder and make us go farther and wider. We are not a rubber stamp board. We are never be a rubber stamp board. We are a board that has real conversation and that finds real solution. And we won't always agree, because we don't always agree, because we are seven different individuals. The diversity on this board is amazing when you bring together not only our race, our culture, our education, and just all the different things that make us up. But I don't want people to be confused. I'm a very educated woman. My parents put a lot of money into me. So every time that I am up here, I am going to articulate in a way that not only my mother would be proud of, that my grandmother would be proud of. And I'm going to continue to push the needle for it because that is what women do. And with all that, no further business coming before the Board of Education. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and second. May we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Seven yeses. We're adjourned.